Good afternoon. <coughs> well, I've been thinking a while about this, just to excuse for a video, and it might help someone. And that is on ignition timing on pre-electronic cars and engines, which is basically most cars before 1980. And what's brought it on? A friend of mine's got an MGB, and I told him how to set it. Um, and also his book says the same, but he can't quite, I'll explain. Anyway, on older engines that you can only alter the ignition at one point, the best place for that, regardless of condition of the engine, or the, how long it's done, how many miles it's done, how worn out it is, the best position is if you can get the engine to pre-ignite or knock or pink to advance it until you can just hear it knocking or pinking and then back it off two degrees and that was told me when I was all oh, 20 odd you know and it's drilled to to this day because you're not going to get it better it's got to be too retarded at some point probably too advanced to others because the problem is um, it's with electronic ignition of course with electronics sorry uh, regulating your advance while it's, it's changing all the time you know for every different throttle settings load and for every engines depending on the size compression ratio everything there's so many variables it's almost impossible to to do it and the only way they get it right is of course testing and uh, remapping etc you know i'm sure you know all about that but we're not talking about that we're talking about old engines right but the thing is when an engine gets old the timing is done with the timing chain and in a minute or two i'm going to explain on my old lister that's here you know because the object of timing is right and all i've got to show you to demonstrate i haven't got any pistons and things but I have got a ram right that someone gave me and this will do so just imagine for argument's sake that that's your conrod right going around your crankshaft and as it goes up and down it's just this right when it's up so that is what they call top dead center so in other words if that was on a crankshaft and I'll show you on my engine in a minute if that was on a crankshaft, right, when it went down like that, God, I wish it went a bit easier, when it went down like that, when it got to the top, let me do it there, when it got to the top, the piston would be what they call at the very top, top dead centre, right, TDC, that's what it's about. So, because the engine is moving, right because the piston is moving you can't you want the maximum force at the top you want the to start the burn of the air fuel mixture to make it expand quickly to force the piston down and get the most economy and the most out your fuel and the most power that's what you're trying to do so basically it's very simple um, if your engine's too advanced at some point during the rev range, if you put your foot down, like, to try it, you know, go up a hill in a fairly high gear and put your foot down and somewhere, when it starts to pick up speed, you'll hear it go like that, you'll hear it knock. Well, that means it's too advanced. And if it's too retarded, also, it's too advanced, by the way, it probably won't want to start very well. So it's like everything on older engines, it's a compromise, you know. You want it to start well and you don't want it to lose power and of course if it's too retarded much too retarded engines run hot and they lose they lo not only lose power but they run hot you know so I'm just trying to explain a little bit so what you want remember it's going around quite fast so as it comes to the top why this is going to hard I don't know and it gets to about there you fire the mixture and the inertia of the engine with the crankshaft and flywheel is spinning it round 
and of course on multi-cylinder engines um, there's another piston firing which is again pushing it up so you fire the mixture it gets to there to top dead center the mixture ex the it's burning and it expands very rapidly and then after top dead center oh this is tight it starts to burn expand rapidly forcing the piston down on the power stroke right so i'm not explaining you about engines I'm, we're talking about timing anyway i can show you on this engine and why it is the whole purpose of this is trying to explain to you why timing marks are no good on a worn engine right they really aren't and i'll try and endeavor to show you on my engine so now using my engine to demonstrate I'll try and demonstrate the um, what I was talking about and it's got a reverse magneto on this as you remember so it's in the way but it doesn't matter um, you can see that's the plug Hang on. When we're there you can see the timing chain right you can see it there now the timing on this engine is done there's a sprocket at the bottom behind that cover there and uh, it's on a taper so you loosen it and move it round that's how you time this engine and there is a timing mark a top dead centre mark which I think you can see just there you see and because the engine you turn it backwards before top dead center and I can't find it at 15 degrees on this engine there is like a lightning mark but I think this far wheels just too far gone to show it it might be there I'm not sure that's about where it should be anyway somewhere there but that's your and it does say TDC on it, but or it did do, once upon a time. It doesn't anymore. But that's it anyway. So what you do is, you find your compression stroke, obviously. Now this is going backwards. So if you go backwards to compression there, and then we go all the way forwards to a compression there, if you turn it back like that one turn there that is top dead center on the exhaust stroke see so it's just to show you with my engine right now on this engine i i've set the points i should be well I, you can look there's a video i fitted new point condenser didn't i not new points sorry they were all right fitted new condenser and uh when I got it, it was it was running all right, but on an older engine, and this is the important bit. You need to you can static time it to start with. You can use a timing light. You can you can do what you like, but when you're running it, as I said, you want to advance it until it knocks under load, and back it off a fraction, because you're not going to get better than that. Because when that timing chain I've just shown you is stretched, these marks are useless not that one that's the top dead center mark but your timing mark which is about here is useless right and you'll probably find that uh, 15 degrees before top dead center is about there like 30 degrees you know it varies so the best you can do to make it run right and start right it's important to get it right to get it to start and i hope to be able to demonstrate that on this engine now in my look it won't start today <laughs> so we're doing this <laughs> sort of live video i'm sure you understand anyway i hope that's slightly helpful for you because lots and lots and lots of younger people that, that got cars with uh, electronic ignition won't have a clue when they get an old classic car that's got uh, points and condenser in a distributor you know but uh, my mate, on his MGB, what he's done, he's um, 
it's got very good petroling <laughs> and some lead additive and so it won't actually pink because they used to put lead in before unleaded they put lead in to stop it pinking or pre-igniting so that's just a well just an excuse for a video it might be interesting to some might not we'll see anyway what you need your engine to do at the end of the day is to start and to produce some power so I'm hoping <laughs> that I can show you that uh, as I say I wish I had a a bit better engine to show you and that will be stood in the way as usual let's see if it starts or not it's quite a warm day it might do plenty of petrol first and see by the way just to show you something my engine doesn't kick back right so I can hold it like that but if you're unsure always hold your starting on like that because if someone had played with this engine and got it too far advanced when I got started it would go bang like that that would fly out my hand it may go around and wrap the back of my hand but it won't break my thumb so just so you know right let's get this a wind round see what happens eh? And I can assure you that that wasn't... I can assure you that wasn't planned or anything. And it's not stayed. It's almost got me as much as you. Right, mixture wise, it's now eight stroking because I've got plenty of paddling. Now it's running properly. As you can see, I'm here. So it starts and runs all right, see? So I've got the timing right on this engine. I had to play about with it a little bit in the past, but uh, we've got it right, because it starts well and it still produces power. And on an old engine like this, you can't really tell, but it does still produce power. So, um, <laughs> on this lovely day again, you know, I hope you've found this, as I say, slightly interesting, possibly slightly useful. And feel free to add some bits in the comments if you want. You know, because I know an awful lot of people know all this, but an awful lot of people don't. So that's what it's all about, really. But it's basically to tell you, if I can very carefully step over this engine, Flywheel without getting the trousers in it. You can now see the timing chain driving the distributor. Very tight, so it's not wobbling about much. If it was, then you want to run to But uh, it's really all about the timing chain. Right? On older engines. And there's lots and lots of variations with every variation you can think of. So it's not changed. There we are. Those things run well still, do not it? Right, I'm going to step over the engine again now. If I can, there we are. That's it. There's a bit of wood here, really, don't I? Come in. Oh, take it all in. I was going to load it up for you a bit just to let you hear it a little bit. It doesn't matter. No, I took it in. Yeah, that's good. And all the mixture on this, they're all the same. Today. I think it runs all right, see. We've got a little bit that's about extra now. Might need to repack it to get a bit more back of it. Still running all right. I think you'll agree with me on there. So, on this engine, I think it's fair to say that I've uh, 
set the timing about right on this old engine and I did it by ear by moving that little sprocket at the bottom back and forward if you go to my very first video of it you'll see how it ran when I got it right long enough for today <laughs> as I said hope you found it a little bit interesting we'll try and find you something else soon